Welcome back to Daily Devotions from Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Andrew Howe. It's a joy to be here with you this week as we explore uh, something that, uh, if you come to worship with us, should be somewhat uh, familiar to you, is confession. Uh, We're talking about another part of uh, the six chief parts in the Catechism of the Christian Faith. This week we're going to talk about confession. Confession. You know, when we think of maybe uh, how movies depict this, we probably think they have depicted it in a way where there's a Roman Catholic priest in a confessional booth offering that uh, opportunity for someone to repent of their sin. But what really is confession? It is, a, is it a merely a Roman Catholic practice, or is it something that is comes from God's word and encourages all Christians to confess. First, what is confession? It has two parts. First, and biblically speaking, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness. It's really a big word, it's, it's two big words, confession and absolution together. We confess our sins and we receive that absolution that absolutely you are forgiven on account of what Jesus did for us on the cross. As when we do it in church, we don't necessarily do it on a confession, confessional booth style, but after our congregation goes through what we call corporate confession, after uh, in a, on a Sunday morning service, I or, or the vicar uh, pronounce that in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's in those words, in the stead and by the command, Jesus has given the authority to forgive sins to his church. He says in the Gospels, um, if someone confesses their sins, then we have been given his blessed and sacred gift to steward his forgiveness and to remind them that they are forgiven. Now, withholding forgiveness is is held for those who are unrepentant of their sin, meaning that they do not see that they have a need to confess. You see, a a closely linked word to confession is repentance. Uh, Probably our evangelical friends uh, will, will probably use that word more often than confession, but really they essentially mean the same thing. You know, when we get to Jesus' first words in the Gospel of Mark, uh, as John the Baptizer is, is going about his, his baptismal ministry and preparing for the way of G, for Jesus to come in. He, Jesus' very first words recorded in Mark's go, gospel is, The kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Confess your sins and believe that the good news is here, that you are forgiven in Christ Jesus. So I guess the question for us to consider is, what sin should we confess? You know, the reality is, Paul says, all have sinned and fall short. And all sin, the wages of sin is death. Um, Before God, we should plead guilty of any and all sins that that we are aware of. And even I even appreciate in our uh, Sunday morning uh, confession, we even use the language, those that I know about and those that I do not know about, um, that we are not aware of, even those that we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. I tell people this all the time. If there's something uh, really uh, you're really struggling with a particular sin, is is come talk to me or go talk, go talk to your pastor. You know uh, that's not something you should be dealing with on your own. And uh, I, I I always make that promise to people. If you want to come and and talk with me and get some things off you, off your chest, and I can remind you of the good news of the gospel of Jesus. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, he will promise to forgive your sins. And that's a great blessing. You know, one of the earliest practices of confession and absolution was is, was, is found uh, in a probably pretty uh, familiar Bible story. Uh, is, the, is the prophet Nathan and King David. 
we all know about King David. We know that he lusted and, and uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba. He, she, he send, sent her husband to the front lines and, and withdrew the troops, and, and he was killed in battle. And, and, and talk about a, a, uh, where the sin of lust turns into all the way to, to, to murder. And God sent the prophet Nathan to rebuke him and to lead him to repentance. And I love this. We're in verse 13 of 2 Samuel two, uh, 12. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. It really broke David when Nathan had to use this unjust story uh, at the beginning of chapter 12 um, and where David was outraged to learn that that was a terrible uh, parable uh, of the story that Nathan was using it. But it was a tactic to lead da- uh, David to repentance. And then th- this is what Nathan says right after David said he sinned. The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Wow, what a powerful gift of absolution. You know, uh, Jesus wasn't in the world yet. This was many generations before him. But God has always had a plan to put away our sin. God, who is faithful and just, has had had a plan from the beginning, from the moment that Adam and Eve left the garden, that he was going to send forth the seed to be that author and source of our forgiveness, which really makes confession a whole lot easier to swallow. Is sin fun? No, it wrecks relationships. It's, it, breaks, it breaks down and causes chaos in our society. It causes our, our own hearts to be heavy and filled with grief. But the free gift of God is knowing that we can come to Jesus confess our sins, and lay our sins at his cross. And he has promised and already paid the penalty and has promised to forgive us. So what a joy it is to know that this practice of confession is one where Holy Scripture really speaks to it. This week we'll have a chance to elaborate a little bit more often on this. And I, like many pastors, always want to remind you that when you confess your sins, God is faithful and just, and he will forgive you. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for the, the, the blessed gift that uh, is known as confession and absolution, where we confess our sins and we are reminded of holy forgiveness won by Jesus on the cross. I pray that our lives would always be built around repentance and forgiveness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.